Hello friends, The Lion King is roaring into theaters. Again. 25 years after Disney transposed Shakespeare's Hamlet to an animated musical for grade schoolers. Jon Favreau's remake of the 1994 classic is just the latest in a rash of remakes from the House of Mouse, leaving many scratching their heads and wondering, what happened to original stories? This week on Heat Vision Breakdown, we explore the trend of Disney remakes, all of which were adaptations of other works in the first place. Yeah, that's right. Your beloved 90s originals weren't all that original to begin with. If you've seen the original Lion King, then the 2019 version will feel awfully familiar. Sure, there's a new Beyonce song and the voices are different, but the main story beats are almost entirely the same. You know, except with 30 more minutes of things like a tuft of Simba fur traveling through the desert to symbolize the circle of life. It's deep. As has been noted by countless learned intellectuals who comment about cartoons on internet forums, The Lion King is a loose adaptation of Shakespeare's seminal tragedy about a doomed Danish prince, Hamlet. Uncle betrays father for throne. Check. Son is helped by carefree sidekicks on his hero's quest. That's a check. Son is visited by ghosts of his father with help from a spiritual advisor. That's a check. Son gets revenge on treasonous uncle. That's a big check. Main character has blonde hair. That's a check. Everyone dies at the end. Oh, no, actually, that one isn't a check. Okay, so clearly, The Lion King is not a direct retelling of Hamlet, and Disney tried to make that clear. While marketing the original, Disney's then-chief, Michael Eisner, touted it as the rare animated feature not to be adapted from a fairy tale. Though maybe you'd never watched Kimba, the White Lion, the popular Japanese animated series that bears a striking resemblance to The Lion King. Hmm. Today, critics aren't complaining about those Kimba comparisons, but they are complaining that Jon Favreau's Lion King has little new to offer, aside from its effects. But truly, Disney movies have never been original in terms of story. What's made them original is the way they've told the stories, through expressive animation and catchy music. Let's take Aladdin as an example. The 1992 animated film is a retelling of a classic Arabian folktale, 1001 Nights. Obviously, there are some major differences in this one as well. For starters, there are actually two genies in the original tale, neither of which share a resemblance with Robin Williams. There are also two Jafar-like sorcerers, so you get a lot more bang for your buck in terms of dudes with those curly little goatees. The Disney film updates the story for a more modern audience, adding in more humor, action, and singing. Yay. This year's live-action Aladdin remake does much of the same. It more or less shares the basic plot, but things are slightly tweaked to reflect modern sensibilities. See the new, empowered take on Jasmine as a prime example. In essence, both films are tweaks of the original story. They're familiar, but they're not direct analogs. The same is true of Tim Burton's Dumbo, the story of a flying elephant who befriends a mouse and inspires us all to, I don't know, learn to fly, I guess? was made famous in 1941 by Walt Disney, as everyone knows. What many in the audience may not have known, however, is that Dumbo is actually based off of a storyline that eventually became a children's book by author Helen Aberson Mayer. Burton's version actually varies quite a bit from the original. It's set decades before the animated version, the animals don't talk, and there are a number of key plot changes that emphasize the cruel treatment of circus animals and stresses animal rights. The live-action film also does away with the infamous crows from the animated original, which have been criticized as racist depictions of African Americans. The Dumbo story was originally pitched and sold to toy company Rollabook, before Disney nabbed it for a film adaptation to recoup its losses after Fantasia. A wise decision, it turned out, as Dumbo was the most commercially successful film for the studio of the decade. And that's the power of Disney taking fairy tales, folklore, or short stories and injecting their signature brand of magic and charm into them to appeal to a mass audience. Cinderella, Beauty and the Beast, and The Little Mermaid are all based on European fairy tales that differ a great deal from their Disney adaptations. Though the latter aquatic tale and the upcoming Mulan live-action remakes are yet to be seen, we do know that both are venturing a bit farther from their animated precursors than recent Disney retreads. The Little Mermaid is already generating conversation with the casting of singer Halle Bailey as Ariel, while Mulan looks to put a female lead at the forefront of a big-budget action-adventure film, something seen too rarely in Hollywood. It also did away with Mushu, the dragon companion voiced by Eddie Murphy that was not a component of the original tale. I should have your hat for that! Snatch it right off your head! And while we all complain about originality, mostly you people on the internet, the question remains, does the audience actually want something new when it comes to these? While Dumbo seems to be the most unique live-action adaptation of an animated classic so far, it is also the film that has performed the worst commercially. What do you actually want? What Disney does well, despite the criticisms it receives, is capture the magic of its source material, in whatever capacity that may be. Aladdin is an adventure. The Lion King is epic. Cinderella is whimsical. Dumbo is heartwarming. Whether or not you believe live-action remakes need to exist, they are undoubtedly performing well for the studio, and each has just enough new material to make it appealing to wide swaths of contemporary audiences. So what are your thoughts on Disney's magic? Are you sick of remakes? Do you have a favorite? Let us know in the comments right down there. Don't forget to subscribe and join us here every Friday morning for new episodes of Heat Vision Breakdown. Hakuna Matata.